You got a few to choose from. That's right. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. I'd like to call the uh, meeting to order. This is the regularly scheduled meeting of the Apex Town Council for August 15th, 2017. Uh, if you would, please uh, bow your heads with me for invocation. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time to gather together to do the work of the town. We pray your guidance uh, in our decision making tonight. We pray that we will work with each other in a civil manner, uh, that we are humble servants uh, of the people, and uh, that, that their will uh, should be our will. Uh, we pray that uh, those who are fighting for our safety overseas and those who uh, are protecting us uh, will be under your protection. And we thank you for those who have made their sacrifices for our freedoms. And uh, we thank, all, thank you for all these blessings that you've bestowed upon us. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Quick bit of housekeeping while you're uh, making yourselves comfortable. Um, in case you hadn't noticed, uh, I had a couple of meetings ago uh, asked the council to uh, let's have a no jacket summer. It's summertime. Why wear a jacket? We're all hot outside. Now, if you're cold natured and you want to wear your jacket, that's fine, but uh, feel free to uh, peel and lay it beside you. Uh, we're making ourselves comfortable. Uh, second thing I'd like to point out uh, on the um, Housekeeping is uh, the, you got an agenda, hopefully, if you're here for a little while tonight. looks like this, stapled together out there on the podium. If you missed one, feel free to go get it. And there's a yellow sheet if you intend to speak at a public hearing tonight. There's a yellow sheet that gives you the guidelines for speaking. Uh, I will hold everybody accountable for following these, so please make yourself familiar with them. And lastly, if you intend to speak during one of the public hearing meetings, there is a sheet for you, and you can see there's probably 10 or 12, uh, but if you pick the right one with the in one you intend to speak on, sign your name and your address for us, then when you come up, we will be able to call you, recognize you, and get you in the record with your correct name spelling. Um, it is fine to go take care of that now. Do not worry about getting up and, and interrupting anyone. This is part of the process. With that, looking at the agenda, we have no presentation, so we move into the time of consent agenda. This is where we typically enact multiple things that are a matter of course for us. Um, most things are considered very non-controversial and normally would be enacted by a single motion. Um, if any council member wishes to pull one item from the consent agenda to discuss later on tonight, they certainly may do so. So at this time, I'll ask the council if there is an item to be pulled or if there is a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion to approve. I'll second. Are right, we have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. All right, the consent agenda is approved unanimously. We now move to page two. Um, as you can see, we now set the regular meeting agenda. This is where we determine what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, this, there are some changes, so please, if you were here for a couple of items, pay attention. Um, there is public hearing number 10. Uh, by consent, um, we want to be able to address that one uh, at the very top of the public hearing list. Also, number two, there is uh, some housekeeping on those two. My request for the council is that we move number 10 and number two to the top of the public hearing list before public hearing number one. I don't have any further changes from that unless the attorney or the town manager has any alterations. I will call for uh, a motion to that um, effect. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the uh, agenda uh, with the changes noted by the mayor. All right, thank you. Is there a second? I'll second, yes. All right, thank you. We have a motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say no. All right, the, the agenda is now set. Uh, public forum happens the first meeting of the month, so uh, we will not be having public forum tonight. We now move into the time of public hearings. And as we just agreed, we will dispense with public hearing number 10 first. Uh, public hearing number 10 uh, has been requested to be uh, heard September 5th. 
Um, we want to make sure we have a full complement of council members. As you can see, uh, we have three out of five here, which is a quorum, but is not a full complement. Um, public hearing number 10 is of large magnitude uh, for the town of Apex. We feel it's very important for everyone to be part of the public hearing uh, as council members and to make a very large decision for the future of Apex uh, with all intact. So uh, with that, I would like to ask if there is a motion to uh, continue public hearing number 10 until September 5th at that regular scheduled meeting at 7 p.m. I'll make a motion to continue uh, item number 10 to the September 5th. Is there, okay, thank you. Is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion on that motion? Yes, I'm a bit disappointed we didn't vote on this tonight. I'm not a big fan of kicking things down the road, but I do appreciate the uh, effort to want to have everybody here. Understand. All right, thank you. Uh, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, say no. All right, public hearing number 10 will be continued until September 5th here in this room during the normally scheduled 7 p.m. meeting. Uh, now looking at public hearing number two. Public hearing number two by request of the applicant uh, would like to be heard, and if I could get the date right, this is October 3rd, which is our first regularly scheduled meeting of the month of October. Uh, and uh, I have spoken to the applicant and also our planner. Um, they are of one accord, so I wanted to ask the council for a motion uh, to continue public hearing number two to October 3rd. And I'll make a motion to continue public hearing number two to October 3rd. All right, is there a second? Second. All right, all in favor, oh, let me ask for discussion. Is there any discussion? All right, all in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? All right, that passes unanimously. We will hear that one uh, on October 3rd. <clears throat> now, we move to public hearing number one. Thank you very much for your patience. If you were here for public hearings number two or 10, please come back on those respective dates. Thank you for your time. Sorry for the inconvenience. At this time, we now move to public hearing number one. Public hearing number one, uh, Vance Hallman, our finance director, will be presenting on uh, selecting a financial institution for funding. Uh, Mr. Hallman, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Mayor, members of the council. At your August 1st meeting, you uh, called for a public hearing to consider potential uh, financing uh, in the amount of $6 million for the purchase of parks, uh, land for parks and recreation. Uh, following that hearing tonight, you'll have motions to consider one, to make findings and determinations that there is a need uh, to finance the purchase of the land. Presuming that is approved, uh, also selection of a financial, financial institution to provide that financing, authorizing the staff to file an application with the local government uh, commission, um, and additionally, two budget ordinances concerning use of the proceeds of that financing, a, a budget ordinance amendment and a capital project ordinance amendment. All right. Any questions for Mr. Hallman? All right. Thank you. Let me ask if there is a motion to, uh, s to authorize the selection of the financial institution to provide funding. Mayor, this oh, public, public hearing. hearing sorry. sorry. Yes. Let's have the public hearing, shall we? I'll open the public hearing now. Um, I do not see anyone that has signed up for this one, so it is rather a formality, but in this case, blank sheet. I will now close the public hearing and uh, refer the matter to council for a possible motion, unless you have... No, sir. Further, no, okay. Council has questions. All right. Questions I or have motion? A, I do have a question. Have, uh, have we already received proposals for this, correct? Yes, sir. We did. Yeah, um, how did we go about requesting those proposals? Uh, we sent out a, a request for a proposal for financing, I believe approximately 15 financial institutions. They had a, uh, a couple of weeks to respond. Uh, we received those and uh, we did an evaluation of those. Um, as you see from the uh, agenda item, one uh, institution was considerably lower than the others. <coughs> and uh, and we do recommend acceptance of that proposal from that financial institution, BB and T. Okay. All right. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve. All right. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve. Any further discussion? For, for clarification, yes. so this is a motion to approve the selection of the financial institution yes. and the budget ordinance amendment. And the budget ordinance amendment. 
Now we also need an approval specifically uh, of the findings and determinations that the that this uh, uh, financing right. and purchase are necessary, and to direct the staff to apply for the to apply for the financing. To All right. Do you understand the motion? Yes. As Thank was you. clarified. Thank you. Everybody okay with that? All right. Any discussion on that? All right. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Okay. That passes unanimously. We now have pass over public hearing number two. I will put that sheet here for the October um, meeting. And we move to public hearing number three and four. Uh, public hearings number three and four, you see the word and between them. That is because we will do these together. Uh, the first one is a question of annexation. The second one is a question of rezoning. And just for clarity, we can't rezone unless we annex. And we don't want to annex unless we're going to rezone. So we put them together as one item. Uh, and we have Liz Lofton presenting tonight. Ms. Lofton. Yeah. Good afternoon. Um, this is Annexation 605 for 8732 Castleberry Road. The property to be annexed and rezoned is located on the north side of Castleberry Road and has one existing single family home. Lake Castleberry subdivision is currently under construction and is to the north. The property is currently in Wake County's jurisdiction. The parcel um, is currently zoned R80 um, and is grandfathered under Wake County zoning since the parcel does not meet minimum square footage requirements under the current zoning. The applicant conducted a neighborhood meeting on May 10th and a copy of the neighborhood meeting report is included in the staff report. The applicant is proposing to rezone to low density residential and a full list of the proposed uses and zoning conditions are included on page two of the staff report. The zoning conditions are consistent with adjacent residential properties and include vinyl siding will not be permitted. All single family homes <coughs> shall have a crawl space or raised foundation. Garage doors cannot protrude more than one foot from the front facade or porch and must have decorative details. A variety color palette shall be utilized and a maximum density of three units per acre. The 2030 land use map classifies the subject's property as rural density residential, and the applicant is proposing to amend the 2030 land use map to low density residential. Approval of the land use map amendment is in keeping with the designation of surrounding properties. Planning staff can recommend approval with the conditions as proposed this rezoning will be consistent with surrounding residential developments to the north and east and will limit the density to three dwelling units per acre. The planning board did hear this item at their August 14th meeting and unanimously recommended approval. I'm here to answer any questions. Is this uh, 1.897 acres a part of, is that Castleberry neighborhood? Is that what that is? What development is that? So it's just the property outlined in black. So it's going to be its own? Yes. <coughs> Any other questions for? Access will be off of Casper Road, I guess. Yes. The applicant um, did have a layout of what they intend to do included in their neighborhood meeting report. Is Castleberry con considered a collector street, I thought? Um, no, it actually dead ends um, down here, and I believe it's a local. You mentioned, yeah. you mentioned there's a three point something in a units per acre. How many actual lots will be on that piece of land, do you know? Um, the applicant has a conceptual, um, and they're showing four. Four, okay, thank you. No more questions for uh, staff? The applicant is for, also here. I'm looking okay. for that staff report or the uh, the sketch of that. Do you know where it's that is? towards the very end of the staff report. Um, I'm not sure which page it's on. It was included in their neighborhood meeting report. No. 
don't see it. But it's, uh, it's uh, page 25 of your staff report. It's on. Is that in public hearing 04? Yes, sir. Yeah, I think so. I think it's in that packet. Oh, okay, that's right. All right, is the applicant here? Do you wish to speak before we have the public hearing or as part of the public hearing? Do you wish that? Come, come up here. If you're, if you're the applicant, feel free to come up here and um, tell us what you'd like. Okay. Just state your name and your address before. My please. name is Betty Twiggs, 817 Blenheim Drive, Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I've known this area for a long time cause, because my sister lived across the road. I don't know what to say best if you want to give me if you want me to give you a little bit of the history and also what's going on next door if anyone wants to know that or you all are very familiar with the Lake Castleberry development and basically I am trying I certainly don't think I blend in with the Lake Castleberry development I mean they they're quite it's quite lovely now with the lake but I'm basically mimicking sort of the lot sizes of the Lake Castleberry all right I am kind of just curious. This has nothing to do with my decision, but I noticed the four lots. Are they, is there going to be a common road, or are each one going to have a driveway off Lake Each Castle? one would have to have a driveway. Off the road. Right. Interesting. Okay. And, you know, that's what I would expect to happen. And the property next to me is, is owned by someone in her late 90s, and she's doing very well uh, and uh, looks younger than me many days. But... Uh, I assume that she's going to be there for still quite a few more years. So that property is a question mark in many people's minds. But that's the reason that I've done the four lots in that fashion. Okay. And uh, just as a reminder, this is a consideration for rezoning uh, for appropriate use, and uh, this is informative but it's not a site plan so no no i understand that okay and i'm i'm, I'm a landscape okay, good i'm a landscape architect by training i yeah. do small residential but i do understand the process all right any other questions for uh the applicant all right thank, thank you, you Ms. twigs for your time. at this time uh, i'd like to open the public hearing uh, i see that there are n no speakers for the public hearing so I will close the public hearing and refer the matter back to council for discussion leading to a possible motion. And uh, to be clear, uh, the motion would be, if so wished, if so desired, would be a, a motion for both annexation uh, of this property and rezoning of the property as submitted in that order. An annexation first, but I also believe there's a land use map amendment. And a land use map amendment, right. Thank you. Staff, how long is Castleberry Road out there? If it's not a collector, it, um, it dead ends. Just it dead back, ends. It just dead ends just to the, uh, to the west. <coughs> Okay, thank you. <coughs> Steph, what are the size of the lots in Castleberry or in that neighborhood there surrounding this property? My concern is we could probably expect the same on that lot next door whenever that time comes. I mean, who knows when it will, but we're going to end up with another five, six driveways out onto the road. That's my concern, but of course, you know, it's not that's a site plan issue, but 
I have that concern as well. Yeah, this is preliminary, so it's not what's going to be there. But it I, this I, question, I, yeah, it's the question of uh, low density conditional zoning <coughs> is the question. Yep. The use. Our current designation of rural residential. What is, is that? Oh, was that two per acre? Two units an acre, or what is that? One per acre. Make a motion that we approve both items the question of annexation, uh, the land use map amendment, and the rezoning application. All right, that motion is in order. Thank you. Is there a second? We had a developer come here, if you don't mind, it, while we're waiting for a second, one way or the other. Well, let me, mm, let me see if the motion is valid. Is there a second on the motion? If, if not, then the motion dies and then we can keep talking. Okay. I don't hear a second. All right, so the motion dies. Let me see what you'd like to discuss. I, I guess, yeah, we're going to low density, which is uh, three units per acre. Um, we had a developer here that was doing a heft. I thought we had a special heft, or two, two units per acre. But we don't. Don't know. That was, I guess that, was, that, was a, that was a uh, conditional zoning. Okay, that was conditional zoning. That's what. I, yeah, I, I don't recall it, I, but I do recall that specific item where it was a half <coughs> an acre per house. So, I've never really liked these combination <laughs> public hearings where you annex and and do all this stuff together. Um, <coughs> I have not been made aware of this potential developments. I've had no conversation with the developer. I'd be okay if we push this to give us some time to, um, for, for at least me, for me to meet with the developer and talk with her about what her idea and her concept is and what she's thinking. Well, the question on the table is, is this low density conditional zoning a reasonable use for this piece of property? And whatever the developer tells you is not. Uh, I don't. I don't see that as a as a real good reason to. I mean, with all due respect, yeah, okay. I don't see that as a real good reason to delay. If we think this is a, if we have the answers for what what is the proposal, it's low density conditional zoning. We know the conditions. That we know this is a dead end road. Mayor, I think you got your answer with no second on the motion on no. the table. I still okay. I need a. Well, I still need a motion. We need to do something. I, I guess uh, when they did the the uh, development next door, they got uh, A-type buffers all the way along Castleberry. But it, once again, how long is that road? We do have. Let me let me see this along Castleberry, and I I hesitate on this a bit, but we do have low density basically butting up against. Castleberry from the other side. If you look at the overall area site plan that shows plan that shows uh, the development next door. And she's looking for four lots. Here we're out at the edge of the county. It's a dead end road. It's a low density proposal. There's similar development near it. Yeah. I'm not trying to steer you, but it yes, seems sure. reasonable to me. You are trying to steer us. Well, me think I don't want I to, but I appreciate it that. seems reasonable to me. We're we're in discussion. Unless, unless I mean, it, if you have a direct answer to the length of the road question, that would be a good fact for us. The length of the road question in terms of where my property sits on Castleberry Road, 
What is the length of the road is the question. If I have a scale? Well, um, there is a scale. We just don't know. It's an estimate. We have, a, we have the ability to estimate estimate based on the scale. Point. Sorry, we have an answer from staff? Eight, eight tenths of a mile, the Thank whole you. length of the road. Thank you. Eight tenths of a mile. Thank you. Is there a motion to deny or is there a motion to approve or from someone who hasn't made a motion already because I'm assuming you haven't really changed where you're coming from. I tell you my biggest pain with this is the driveways, more drive more just exits on the castle. It seems like it would have made great sense in that development that's surrounding, but, but now we're we're piecing this in and we're on one point eight nine acres and we're gonna put four units with driveways directly out onto the road. And now there's a unit next to it that who knows how big that is, but that, you know, is going to happen at some point in the future too. It's just how about how about if we ask staff a possibility question? Can Castleberry Road be continued? I see it immediately makes that hard turn at the ch county line, but based on the driveway concern, can Castleberry at some point become a, an actual through road to into Chatham County? or somewhere else where now having driveways on that road in um, a low density conditional zoning use would be a problem. Mr. Mayor, yes. to the west of this property, you have the lake and then the buffer around the lake in, in, in Lake Castleberry, and then um, shortly thereafter you have protected those space of core property mm -hmm. um, that is immediately west and then extends to the south. In fact, Lake Castleberry Road is not even constructed all the way to the county line. It stops at Sleepy Valley Road. Um, so it's not likely that it would be extended directly west. Okay. Could you could you trace that maybe on the map where you're talking about the lake and all that stuff? The aerial. Yeah, I can So it ends here. I think the applicant would like to alter the conditions if you all would like to hear that. That's what she was trying to say earlier. If you would consider that. It seems like you're struggling, so that might um, be helpful. Do you have condition condition changes you'd like to make, Ms. Twiggs? I understand the concern. In fact, I've worked for DOT right when I got out of the I think that this is a, a situation that really should be decided by site plan. <coughs> now, an LB3 actually would, is a heavy for that. If I were doing what is exactly behind me, I would accept an LB2.7, and that would guarantee you that you would never have more than four blocks. I can at least give you guarantee. In fact, I sort of expect there will be three lots. L let me ask. Uh, well, let me pause you for a second because I want to see. Does, does what she just said equate to a condition? What she's saying is she would be she would be accept low density with a maximum of 2.7 units per acre. As a and we can. Can you? As a condition. Can we? Okay, so you're offering that as. A, thank you for putting in the words of a condition. All right. Does everybody? How many? How many lots is that? Right now we're at four. Three units. Three units. So this would be a condition to to have 2.7 as the maximum. And that would allow units for three lots then, or she said in four, possibly four. Three lots. Three lots. Three lots. Okay. All right, to me, it, it, it fits with three lots if we're going to fit onto Castleberry. And okay. I'm fine with that. I would make a motion to do that if that's with what we're doing. with the new condition. Act. With the new condition, three lots. All right. So it's a maximum of three lots then on that. No, that's not what she was saying. Not what she was saying. No. It's not. That's not the condition. No. 2.7 units per acre, so it's 1.89 acres. If you do that math, 
Well, that's, hang on, that's not, that's not what we're talking about. Hang on one second, Ms. Twiggs. Um, can you finish that thought there, Diane? 1.89 acres, and I think the question the council was trying to figure out is, if you do the math, dot, 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 what does that lead to? Uh, it's five lots. Okay. How's, how's that different than, I guess now the low density she could have, well, how's that any different than what's being proposed? for the answer. That's a good question. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. The question, the question was um, if five is the number with 2.7 dwelling units per acre maximum, what, how does that change from the original conditions with three? It goes from 5.6 to It 5. doesn't. It's, a, it's still five. So it doesn't change. I'm not change. sure that that was the, I'm not sure. Um, Yes, staff doing the math at 2.1 units per acre, that would limit it to three lots. Okay, so reverse engineering the three lot would be 2.1 dwelling units per acre. But that's not the condition that was offered by the applicant. But that answers the question that was asked by council members. So the condition that was offered was 2.7 dwelling units per acre maximum. <clears throat> And staff has told us that there's no effectual change in the number of lots. Not when we did the math. It's the right. Same. Okay. <clears throat> any, would, any further thoughts? Go I ahead. mean, I, I would I would support this at that three maximum two point one the LD two point one. Any other thoughts from council members? Councilman Jensen, I think I'd like to know where you where you stand. If you feel like when we have, if we feel like the 2.7 dwelling units per acre is <clears throat> acceptable, we have that condition offered by the applicant. Yeah, which means maximum of four lots. Five, five uh, is what staff five said. I'm yeah. sorry, five. You staff said, said five. Maximum density of 2.1 with a maximum of three lots. Okay, so that's new okay. new condition. Thank you, Ms. Twiggs. I'll make the motion. Thank to you, Liz. I'll second. Based on the new okay, great. All right, so just to be clear, we have a motion to approve with 2.1 maximum dwelling units per acre, which mathematically would equate to three lots. Staff, you're still okay with that math? Yes. That's okay. Fair. All right, thanks. And we have a second uh, as well. Um, and just to be clear, this is the annexation, the modification to the land use map amendment, and the rezoning, all in one motion. Okay. Questions on the motion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Okay, that passes unanimously. Thank you, Ms. Twiggs. Uh, now we move to public hearings number five and six. Uh, same thing, these are two items that are both a question of annexation for the uh, Garris Road property and a uh, possible motion to approve the rezoning application. And Shelly Mayo is presenting tonight. Good evening. Hello. Okay. Just to orient you to the site a little bit, this is down on the kind of the southwesternmost corner of our of our land use map. Um, it's outside of the town's ETJ and out in the county and outside. Of, um, it's currently along just off of New Hill Holloman Road between old US-1 and new US-1 and immediately adjacent to our lovely water reclamation facility. It's a brand, big brown, brand new one. Is that our, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Is that our fire station right there across the street? Yes, sir. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the property in question is about 18.74 acres. It's 
currently designated as Wake County um, R30 and GB, which is their general business district. Um, as you can see, the surrounding properties, there are only two that are currently annexed into the town. Next door, there's the Plan Commercial, which is the, the um, New Hill Community Center, and then the town's water reclamation facility. Uh, the rest of the surrounding properties are Wake County zoning, with the predominance being R30. There is some of their GB, their general business district, and Wake County HD. Um, the applicant conducted a neighborhood meeting on May 30th, 2017. The neighborhood meeting report is attached to your staff report. The 2030 land use map does designate this as medium density residential. So this proposed use of medium density conditional zoning does is a valid district within that land use map designation. The applicant is proposing uses that are consistent with a medium density district. They include accessory apartment, family care home, single family, utility minor, greenway, park active, park passive, recreation facility private. Um, the conditions that the applicant is, is proposing for the architecture are also consistent with our typical architectural conditions for most uh, single family rezoning. With that said, planning staff does recommend approval of the proposed rezoning as submitted by the applicant. Um, planning board heard this petition yesterday at their regularly scheduled meeting and unanimously recommended approval as well. Um, staff believes that this is a reasonable and a reasonable and rezoning and is in the public interest because it will permit increased housing options in the New Hill area and the higher density will support the future non-residential uses in the adjacent neighborhood mixed use activity center, which is this blue dot here. Um, 2030 land use map has low density to the west, I'm sorry, to the east of New Hill Holloman. Industrial employment to the west of this particular parcel with an area of medium density and then office employment and commercial striping just to the south. Do you have any questions? I'm happy to answer them. The applicant is also here. All right, questions for staff? None. All right. Thank you, Shelley. Is the uh, applicant does the applicant wish to speak? Come on up if you do. All right. Uh, if you would state your name and address for us, and uh, not that it's going to be a problem, but we typically give you about nine minutes. So okay, have fun. I'll make it. I'll make it shorter and shorter right. than that. Mike Foley, New Hill Development, uh, 107 Oxpens Road, Cary, North Carolina. As uh, Shelley mentioned, uh, the project is consistent with the 2030 land use, land use plan. Uh, we've, we've put together a list of conditions working with Shelley that I think will assure that we've got a, a quality product out there. Uh, because of the topography of the property, we've got a stream running to the back based on some preliminary design work. The maximum number of homes we could put on the property is uh, about is 54 which uh, would be slightly less than three units per acre. And uh, also note, this property already has existing water and sewer, town of Apex water and sewer on it as, uh, as well. And I'm happy to answer any questions. All right, thank you. Mr. Foley? Sure, yes. All right, questions for Mr. Foley? Not seeing any. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. I, I don't have any questions, I don't think, directly for the uh, applicant, but I, okay. as you well know from the planning well, uh, meetings. And, uh, I haven't gone to the public hearing yet, but I just want to make sure, if you want to hang on to that one. I will. I have no choice. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. All right, Mr. Foley, thank you very much. I'll, sure. I'll move to the public hearing time. I see no one signed up for this, so I will open and sub subsequently close the public hearing refer the matter back to council. Councilman Jensen, you have the floor. No, I, I just, this, uh, I have trouble with uh, medium density out in that area. Uh, and not so much the medium density, but the fact that uh, we keep on adding more and more housing uh, units without a complementary uh, non-residential of some sort going in someplace in Apex. And 
I have stated it before, and I've gotten to the point where I'm kind of rigid on this, that, um, that I don't want to see large or relatively large, which is this, uh, developments without a complementary effort for providing <coughs> workplaces in Apex. So it's basically philosophical. I understand why the developer is trying to do what he's doing, but um, I just have gotten to the point where I think that we don't want to continue to be a bedroom community. It's not good for our community. It's not good for the future tax base, and I think there has to be a complementary item between residents being added and non-residential being developed at the same time. All right, thank you, Councilman. Any other comments? What is your average lot size proposal of the 54 lots? Uh, between five and 7,000. But just to be clear, that was informational, not a condition of the of the application. Right. The desire is to do a product that's more affordable than what's already being built in that vicinity. That's the ultimate goal. Which staff we have Jordan Point, Jordan Manners out there. Is that correct? What else is going on out there? Not much on that road, is there? No, not on that road. Anything from you? No. No? Okay. I don't I don't know if we have a motion. We need we need a motion. I feel like I'm echoing. I'm make a motion we approve the annexation and corresponding rezoning. Is there a second? I'm not hearing a second. Let me ask if there's further discussion. Well, I I would hope that the de people developing land out there understand what we where we need to go and would know understand that um, there needs to be an investment on both sides as we move ahead. And apparently that hasn't been made clear to the developers, and I hate to say no on something like this, but at the same time, I think I have a responsibility to our town, the folks that are living here right now, that we need to, we need to develop a much more integrated town. That's, my, that's where I'm having trouble. I hate to shut, turn down anybody because there's property rights but at the same time there's public rights and I'm really stuck. Mm. Well, let me ask Councilman Moyer, do you have any thoughts to help us get a direction here? Um, well, I, I have a, I'm similar to Mr. Jensen, I'm having a, some difficulty with the lot size that far out of town, the, uh, where we're at here, um, we can expect more of the same if this goes through tonight. Another more five to seven thousand square foot lots, way out on the edge of our jurisdiction. Um, I just I'm having a hard time with that. I, I did not know about this until I saw the agenda. Um, I, I believe um, everybody knows they need to reach out to me and talk to me and, and go over their plans with me and let's sit and talk with them. Um, you know, this surprised me on the agenda when I saw this. Uh, I think it came out Thursday. So, um, would it be possible to continue? Um, we we can, if if council wishes. How is this one different? Well, <laughs> it would give us a chance to discuss it with everybody involved on the council. I I, I just don't want to set a precedent, Councilman Moyer, that we have to have one-on-ones with every single development that comes up with every single developer. When we have the information presented to us on a Thursday evening or Friday morning, we have the information for the whole weekend. And we have information presented by staff and we have a planning board that reviews things and staff reviews things. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's good and it's certainly fine for, count, for council members to discuss with developers, but it's, 
I don't want to set a precedent where it's a requirement that we don't vote on something simply because we haven't had a discussion with a developer. All right, well, for I, I hear that and I respect that, but for two years that has been my message. Um, I'm open, and I, I'm certainly not setting a precedent for everybody, but for me that's that's something that that I hope that developers would respect if they want to do business in Apex to sit and talk with me about your ideas and what you have going on. Um, and that's a message for two years I've had. But. And I agree, kicking the can down the down the road is not good. On the other hand, once again, we have just barely a quorum tonight. Mm -hmm. So from that standpoint, I, I wouldn't want to do it on a general basis, but from that standpoint, I think we're going to deny this to this developer with the number of people we have here tonight. If we're going to do that, and even if I'm going to be a no vote next time, and it does, we have enough people here that it's going to pass, that's fine. But I think before we deny something like this, we should give them an opportunity to hear it before the whole county. That's, that's going against what I think we should be doing in Apex in some respects, because I really well, think that we need to. But I, to if Mr. Fo if Mr. Foley thinks that he may be able to make alterations to his proposal in order to help meet objectives that council wants, and we need a little time to do that, if you're amenable to, to that, we can certainly um, look at the September 5th meeting as the next target. Um, but I don't want to do it just so we can have conversation. I want to make sure that you feel like there, there are conditions you might be willing to, to change or alter for your application. Mayor, yeah, if I can interject. Um, the UDO does allow for an applicant um, a one-time right mm -hmm. to be granted a continuance. So it is... If he um, wishes it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Sure. It's a one-time right that the applicant can request. Right. Yeah. Any subsequent ones would be at the Thank discretion you. of the council. Yeah. Would you Would you like that? Yes. Okay. Definitely. All right. So, um, based on your request, I think we can simply take that request, and I don't know that we need to even vote if he has one by right by ordinance. You do would. We, um, should we do it for formality? The public here or the yeah, okay. Continuous. All right. So let me have let me ask for a motion. Is September fifth acceptable? That would be the first Tuesday of September. Yes. Okay. So if that's acceptable, and staff September fifth. Okay. All right, so um, is there a motion to continue this to September 5th? I'll second. All right, any further discussion on the motion to continue? All right, uh, all in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed, no. All right, so we will continue that to September 5th. Uh, the uh, developer and council members, please do have conversations so that we can figure out what maybe helps, if possible, move the ball forward for you. All right. Thank you very much. All right. That takes us to public hearing number seven. Um, is it too loud? Feels like it's loud. I can hear my echoes coming back. All right. Thank you. Uh, public hearing number seven. Uh, this is a possible motion for annexation of the McGee property. Annexation number 610. Uh, with that, I will turn this over to Diane Kin, the Planning Director. You have the floor. All right. Good evening. This property is located off of Holt Road on Howell Road. Um, it is a property that they are requesting annexation in order for um, them to be able to get, uh, definitely too loud, <laughs> um, to be able to get uh, water and sewer. And staff does recommend approval. All right. Good, good, good. And uh, let's see, this is a request for annexation, so don't have an applicant for this. Let me just refer to the public hearing uh, sign-up sheet. I see no one signed up, so I will now uh, open the public hearing and subsequently close the public hearing and refer the matter back to council for discussion to a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, this, this does lead to possible uh, subdivision, at, but um, it's in the middle of a, almost, I think, of a development right now. So, and if they need water, and certainly water is a problem on Castleberry, and the more impermeable surface you add out there, 
uh, it could well be a disaster. So taking it on its face value, I, that's why I second it. I think okay. it's something that's necessary. If there's no further discussion, I'll call for the vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. All right, that passes unanimously. We now move to public hearing number eight. Uh, this is a public hearing and possible motion regarding transportation plan, thoroughfare, and collector street plan map modifications, uh, adding a local connector street. And we have Shannon Cox, our senior transportation planner, presenting. Ms. Cox. Okay, good evening. The proposed amendment to the transportation plan tonight is in the vicinity of Center Street. The proposal is to add a future local connector street north from existing Old Grove Lane. It is not proposed that that would connect to Center Street. And I want to show you what's um, been approved in this area. This is the existing uh, Groves neighborhood. Center Street Station has been approved here, leaving these two rectangular parcels um, which currently have private driveways to Center Street. If this property was to redevelop, um, it would not be desirable to have another public street connection to Center Street. So this local connector would allow um, these two parcels to have public street access. You can see that this small rectangular area here um, is actually owned by the Groves Homeowners Association. It's not a buffer and it's not right of way. This gives you another view of the approved um, development here, which would extend Old Grove Lane, but there would be homes here, so no, no public road for them to connect to. Planning staff recommend approval of the proposed amendment to the transportation plan. The planning board heard this amendment at their meeting yesterday and also unanimously recommended approval. And I can try to answer any questions you might have. All right, questions for Ms. Cox? All right, hearing none, I'll, thank you, Ms. Cox. I'll open the public hearing. And uh, looks like no one signed up to speak tonight. So we'll close the public hearing. Refer the matter. Sorry? Okay, come on up, come on up. Um, and if we were full, I might have to say otherwise. But no, that's all right. What I want you to do is after you finish, come write your name up here so we can have okay. the record. No, State no, your no. name and address, please. My name is Rhonda Henderson. All I right. live at 1132 Center Street. I am one of these properties here. And I'm just concerned that um, I've lived in this house for 20 years. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And Apex is coming through now and saying, okay, you're not a citizen. You're not part of our town, but we're going to take your property. I don't think anybody's no, saying that. No. I think maybe we could clarify what's happening here. Where, where exactly is your house? Can you point to it, please? Right there. So it's okay, one of those two. Yeah. Um, l let me ask if the planning director or Shannon, I don't know, either one of you would like to address. Um, this, is a, this is a modification to transportation plan only tonight. Okay, right? so, right, but it, it sounds, what I'm understanding is that if either one of these properties is sold and subsequently developed, a portion of one or both of them is going to be annexed by the town to build road. Is that correct? No. Not forcibly. No. So what's going on, it was um, basically when the second subdivision, which is the graphic subdivision that's not part of the aerial photo, when that came in, it became clear to us that if you or your neighbor wanted to go together and sell a property, one or the other, one would not be able to go on its own. There's not enough land to put in the public street. Right. So but if, if you both it was sold and that one was developed somehow, it it wouldn't be. It would not be a. You don't have. There's not enough width for that. But if both if both of you wanted to sell to a developer, and that developer wanted to develop, they would not be able to do so under the current configuration. What this um, local connector street does is it would allow a developer to pay you more money so that they could develop additional lots. The problem is, is that Old Grove Lane and I cannot read that. It's upside down. Something, Something meadow. Meadow, Rains it's, Meadows. It's all Old Grove, Grove Lane all the way through. Well, now the, the, the graphic side um, that's not a real oh, road yet. Here. Rain uh, Meadow Drive. They're, Rain they're, Meadow Drive, yeah. Right. The distance between them is the 
minimum distance. There cannot be another road on Center Street at your property. So your properties would not be redevelopable in the future if you ever wanted to sell them to a developer. What this proposal does is it gives an opportunity if you both decided to sell together that it could be developed um, on a cul-de-sac and there could be multiple lots around the cul-de-sac. Um, the town does not build any of these um, connector roads. We do not have the money to build connector roads. We've never built a connector road. It's really to facilitate development if you want to sell your property. So the developer would be the one having to do... They would pay for the road. They would pay for the uh, rezoning. They would pay for the subdivision. You would just be selling to them. It makes your property more valuable when you're negotiating with them because you have a way to have a road connection. Currently, there's a strip of land next to Old Grove Lane that is um, not, you can't really cross it at this point. You'd have to negotiate. my backyard, yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, so you'd have to negotiate um, with the current property owner, which is the HOA. Um, having it on the transportation plan gives you um, a better bargaining point. So we actually did it to help you and your neighbor for the future when you want to sell. Um, the town is not um, allowed to um, forcibly annex. In the state of North Carolina, it's not legal. We cannot, we're not going to annex you. We're not going to build a road across your property. It just gives a future developer options if and when you, you and your neighbor want to sell. You'd have to do it together. Okay. But if, if it was just me selling my house and they tore the house down and wanted to build something back here further, they wouldn't be able to provide well, they road could, access. They, they could do, I already have road access. They could build a house. They could yeah, build, they could house. build one house. Okay, all right. Well, there's not public road access in the back currently. Um, so there would have to be, using would have to be an eyebrow driveway. or something built. I mean, there'd have to be some, some sort of public infrastructure built across that strip. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that clears things up. Thank you very All right, much. Sure. Hopefully if you don't mind. Hopefully you didn't lose too much sleep over that. No, yeah. yeah well, this is actually, this is. Um, it's good for you. This is actually, yeah. We, we want to make sure that you don't end up with a, a piece of property there that when a developer comes to want to buy, he has to back out because he can't connect it to a road. Mm -hmm. The mayor caught that at the last meeting, by the way. So yeah, this is the mayor's idea. Yeah. He brought that up. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. So guys. give him a big hug. <laughs> no, it, it is best for you. Even though you're not official there. Oh, thank you very much. I'm not a member of the town. I'd like to see them not. <laughs> well, there's an annexation request for <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks for coming up. Uh, Ms. Henderson, right. Yes. All right. Uh, not seeing anyone else, I'll close the public hearing. A little thrown now. That's, that was fun. Um, all right, so going to uh, now, that was our uh, close of public hearing. So at this time, I'll ask council if there is a motion or discussion that leads directly to a motion. I will make a motion that we approve this. Okay. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussions on that motion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say no. All right, that passes unanimously. Thank you, everyone. Uh, we're now at public hearing number nine. This is a possible motion regarding various amendments to the UDO related to the sale of alcohol. And we have Amanda Bunce presenting. Ms. Bunce. Okay, so the following amendments are proposed in order to modify the um, percentage of alcohol sales permitted for various uses, basically to put them all on the same playing field as restaurants currently. And I'll go through each one of them. We are proposing to amend the percentage in the definition of bar or nightclub to raise that threshold from 10% um, to 49%. 49% um, is the maximum percentage of gross quarterly receipts that a restaurant can have devoted to the on-site consumption of alcohol. And so staff believes that bars should be treated uh, in a similar manner. And we're, just to let you know, wherever bars are permitted, in the town of Apex, it is only by a special use permit, which would be up to the town council to approve. So just to make sure I'm clear, we're making this less restrictive, right? Uh, yes, that is correct. Um, for the definition of grocery specialty and looking at this topic, we realized that beverages were not referenced at all for specialty grocery. And so we are proposing to add the phrase and beverages, both non-alcoholic and beer and wine. 
Um, for the definition of the next four uses, brewery, microbrewery, distillery, and microdistillery, we are proposing to add the same language that exists for restaurants that this use may include the on-premise sales, service, and consumption of alcoholic beverages as an accessory and secondary use, provided that the establishment's gross quarterly receipts from the sale of alcoholic beverages for on-premise consumption shall not exceed 49% of the establishment's gross quarterly total gross receipts. The 49% number, that was raised recently, right? Didn't it used to be lower? I am not familiar with that. 49% is a typical threshold for communities around the nation. Um, yeah as threshold for alcohol sales? It's been the number for restaurants for many, many, many years. I don't know when it was changed. What was the change we made uh, probably about a year ago? It had to do with uh, like I, I the Apex Beer Dispensary. Yeah, and okay, that was at the planning committee meeting and what the discussion was was actually limiting the hours of operation but in speaking with legal staff as we were working through uh, the uh, amendment process, it became clear that that was not a legally defensive way to go. So we had to kind of hunt, and it went back to the planning committee. You were filling in for someone that night, um, and uh, we discussed with them raising the percentage from 10% uh, for brewery, distillery, microbrewery, microdistillery, as well as some additional uses that Amanda will go through to 49% to put them all in the same playing okay. field as restaurants. That's why that number 49 was ringing the bell. Okay, thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Um, the next use, uh, the next change is to the supplemental standard for recreational uses uh, to allow on-premise alcohol sales uh, to uh, be up to 49% versus 10%. So again, sticking with that threshold. An example of this would be like a bowling alley, but it would not be a public park. Um, the next change is to the supplemental standards for bar and nightclub. And there's a couple of changes here to the supplemental standard. Um, we are proposing that amplified sound be prohibited in bars and nightclubs when they're located adjacent to a residential district. Um, outdoor serving areas are already prohibited and we feel like um, uh, amplified sound, which can be a nuisance, um, should also be included in that standard. I will point out that we are proposing to strike the phrase or an existing residential use. Um, we have many mixed use districts uh, in the town, many PUDs, um, and uh, where those are mixed use, we feel like, uh, and if bar or nightclub is listed as a permitted use in that PUD, that uh, a single family or townhome or apartment use within that same PUD shouldn't restrict that use from occurring, uh, basically, or from having outside serving areas. Um, so that's why we are proposing that it only be applicable for an adjacent residential district. Um, PUDs are not considered residential districts. Okay. And of course, uh, there is an exemption except when approved according to the standards found in, um, in the temporary use section. Okay. And finally, for the supplemental standards for retail sales and services, the percentage increased from 10 to 49 percent, and so this would apply to uh, any type of retail sales, including grocery stores. Can we go back to uh, the bar and nightclub situation? You say amplified sound. If they have sound tracks or something within inside of the building, so this applies. This is for only, outside. Only for outside. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure because it was, wasn't and, clear and to me. Yeah. So. Let me make sure I understand what we're prohibiting. So if you have essentially a street and on this side you have a neighborhood, on this side you have a bar or nightclub that goes in, this bar or nightclub cannot play music outside. Correct. Period. At all. No end date and not, no end time or anything. Correct. We're saying no. never. I, we, no, we... Um, if it's a residential district across the street. No, but we it was supposed to have the information about special events. Well, right, right. Never mean Not never. Right, you're a special right. Special use permit shall be required. The, the phrase, except when approved according to the standards found in Section 4.6, Temporary Uses and Structure. So, for instance, if the bar or nightclub got approval for a special event, which is limited to, I believe, two times. It's, there's very limited in the number of times per year that that can occur. Um, then there could be the opportunity to have um, amplified sound. Now keep in mind the noise ordinance still applies. Which is, what is our noise ordinance? 
Uh, well, it depends on the time of day and what the adjacent uses are, I believe. So let's um, use so this example like a residential street and then a bar. Um, I do not have that number specifically. The decibel level that would be permitted um, Can we take is something that the police someone? department enforces, yeah. not the planning staff. Okay. Also, um, so using a current example, um, Southern Peak, is that considered in a mixed use? Development. That is a mixed use so development. So this ordinance does not apply to Southern Peak as far as no band or music outside. Is that what this is saying? Um, essentially, if that were classified as a bar, that's what that's what this is um, saying. It, the outdoor serving outside serving area and amplified sound would be permitted. Would be permitted. Or PUD the, that are coming through. The adjacent district is not a residential district. It's plan unit development. It's mixed use district. We're so only like, talking about residential districts. Most of, and we don't have any bars in town. There's not one bar currently in town that has a special use per, permit operating as a bar. <coughs> but if one wanted to locate here, they need to locate in something that is not adjacent to a residential district. If they or seating areas. In so out, so Southern Peak is not operating as a bar? What are they operating as a microbrewery? Mm -hmm. So, I, okay, yeah. we'll talk more about it, I guess. You can be done with your extra job. Sorry. <laughs> all right, was that the last one then? That, 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 that is it. Okay, all right. Well, before you sit, were there any other council questions for Amanda on any of these? I just want to make sure that the bar and nightclub, they can have amplified sound inside, but they cannot have amplified sound outside. That's correct. And I'm trying to make sure that reads that way. It's kind of a little ambiguous to me, but I'm not an English major. Thank you. Um, have the bars, nightclubs, breweries have been notified of this change? It sounds like in general this is less restrictive, so they'd be in favor of this, I presume, right? We have worked um, very closely, primarily Diane and the planning committee have worked with um, several uh, businesses um, in the area. Okay, the, so the word got out and all that. Mm -hmm. no. Yes, and they, they have received a draft, were emailed, I believe, a draft of the... They received multiple emails, and I only heard back from one, um, there was a beer dispensary downtown, and they were... they were in favor yeah, but, but everyone else when they came to the planning commit the last planning committee meeting um, I mean they had been notified of it there any lessening of restrictions makes them happy uh, well the, the ordinance on the sound is kind of more restrictive except that we currently don't have any don't. uses approved as a bar within the town of Apex everything is either restaurant or brewery microbrewery it's of, of less restrictive point. because it doesn't doesn't have the restriction with a residential use to me it's, it's only the residential district. There's residential uses all over the place in districts that are either non-residential or mixed-use districts. Mm -hmm. So one suggestion, if your intention is the amplified sound is actually an outside, you may want to put the word outside in front of amplified because it's not clear that I agree. outside serving area also implies outside amplified sound. That's no problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think I if that was your intention, maybe that would be a good way to clarify it. The mayor was an English major. Um, I had an English major for a mother. <laughs> <laughs> it rubs off on you. So, <laughs> sorry for you. Yes, but my spelling was really good. Yeah. I agree. I think outside should be there. I thought it was a little ambiguous. We didn't make that. No, you were no, actually. I mean, you helped point that out. I dropped. Yeah, you did. You did. Um, uh, I guess one, one final thought on that, um, I, and since I know we don't have a bar or nightclub, but since we've got the language in front of us, I might would suggest even percussion instruments out, outdoors because a percussion instrument can carry sound quite far. And, and, and I don't want to get too into the weeds, but... Well, in a lot of, I was a uh, marching band person, yeah. so a lot of musical instruments can carry True. very far, trumpet, a piccolo, um, so percussion, so... Uh, we may have to, maybe we can think about so that. So that's where the noise ordinance, we rely on that. Okay, maybe we can <laughs> keep that in mind, but before yeah, we get a bar. We have complaints. Before we get a bar. We haven't got a bar yet. Right. So. They have to come to you anyway. Good and That's right. They will have to come to you for your special use permit, and right. the applicant can offer conditions restricting things as necessary. Bagpipes. 
Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, thank you, Amanda. Any anything else, or do we want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. To it. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a public hearing. I'm sorry, public hearing. Again. You're right. Thank you. All right, public hearing. Open the public hearing. Uh, no, no signatures. So we'll close the public hearing. Now I'll ask the question. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve, uh, yeah, subject to the outside before amplified sound in 4.4.5A2. Uh, All right. Thank you. And, uh, is there a second? Okay, I'm done with my. Oh, yeah. Second. Second. Okay. okay, we got a second. Further discussion on the motion. Part of this came before the planning committee, as the mayor well knows, mm -hmm. and it was really almost pushed by some of the microbreweries here because it helps them out to have sales, more sales on their facility where they make a bigger profit, um, because otherwise they'd have to sell a whole bunch more outside of their facility to be able to sell more inside. So this helps them. Uh, helps them out, and I think it's a, a really good thing. Okay. Economic development <laughs> <laughs> of any kind. Yeah. Almost. All right. Any further discussion? All right. I'll call for the vote. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, no. Okay. That passes unanimously. Public hearing number 10 has already been continued, so that concludes public hearings. Uh, there is no old business. We now move to unfinished business. And uh, Sean Purvis, our assistant town manager, stands at the ready to talk to us about the possible purchase of two properties along Wimberley Road. Uh, Mr. Purvis. Yes, sir, Mayor, all of the members of the council. And actually, as a point of clarification, I will actually have this uh, item and the second item. I think I actually had Mike in there, but it will be Okay. Mike, so. uh, the first item for you is the purchase of property from Mr. Jerry Luter. Uh, there's actually two properties uh, totaling approximately 22 acres off of Wimberley Road. The purpose of the property is for par future park development. Uh, this corresponds with the public hearing earlier that you heard from uh, Mr. Holloman regarding the financing. Uh, per council's direction earlier, what we researched or looked into, uh, we agreed on a price of 100000 per acre. All right, any questions from Mr. Purvis or is there a motion to approve this purchase? Like motion to approve. I'll second. All right. Discussion on the motion to approve. Yes, I have a question. We settled at a hundred thousand an acre, um, and I, I believe we got this appraised too, right? We did. It came back around ninety-seven, ninety. It was in, I think, ninety. The range was ninety-five to ninety-seven, ninety, something like that. So we're pretty close to. It. Okay. So we're paying a little bit of a premium, but in this day and age. Yeah. <coughs> And with appraisals being what they are, I think we better grab. I agree with what you two are saying. Keep it out of residential. All right. Okay. Okay. To call for the vote. All right. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed say no. All right. That passes unanimously. And Mr. Sean Purvis pinch hitting for Mike Clark on the possible motion to approve purchase of property on Hickory Hill Lane. Sean Purvis. Mayor of the Council. Uh, similar, uh, similar to the item before, this property actually is adjacent, uh, immediately adjacent, uh, off of Wimberley Road, um, Hickory Hill Lane to be uh, precise. The development, uh, the property uh, would be used for future park development and it's probably approximately 7.6 acres and again 100,000 per acre just like before, uh, tied into the financing approved earlier this, this evening. Okay. Questions? Or a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion? All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, no. All right, that passes unanimously. You got two singles there, Mr. Purvis. Sign you up for the town softball team. <laughs> Ghost man on second. Uh, Mike Clark is now up to the plate. New business number one, we have the Mercer Estates Master Subdivision Plan on Wimberley Road, approximately 19 acres. Mr. Clark. Good evening. Uh, this is a master subdivision plan for Mercer Estates. To orient you to the site, the, um, the track of land is 19.48 acres located along Wimberley Road. You see Lake Castleberry here. Uh, this is the parcel that was discussed earlier tonight as part of an annexation uh, and rezoning. Um, there's a private road diesel path that runs on the south boundary of it. And this large cleared track going through the parcel is uh, a pipeline easement that's approximately 100 feet wide. Uh, the zoning of this parcel is plan unit development. This was rezoned last year. 
to allow for uh, single family residential structures. Um, it is made up of two individual parcels. The 2030 future land use map calls for this area to be rural density to residential. Currently the site um, is mostly wooded. It does have a fairly large pond. Also has a stream running across the um, east portion of the parcel with uh, the required buffers and some wetlands areas. The parcel to the north is residential. Um, after the rezoning, the north, uh, parcel to the north, um, they start construction of a house. Uh, the surrounding um, is undeveloped. The applicant is proposing to put in 19 single family lots, which does have a density of less than one unit per acre. Um, the applicant did hold a neighborhood meeting request for this item on uh, July 25th. Um, the staff report is included in your packet. Um, it is broken into two sections, north and south of the easement, or the um, Colonial Pipeline easement. There is four parcels that would be located south of the easement, including the BMP, and uh, the remainder of the lots would be north of the easement. Um, the lot sizes would have an average of 18,930 square feet uh, with a minimum of 15,057 square feet. Several of the lots do exceed that. You can see here uh, several are in, the, in excess of 20,000 square feet. It is worth noting that none of the lots do encroach into the pipeline easement. Um, because of the rural density character of this, the applicant was not required to put in RCA, uh, but as indicated in the overall, there's still uh, quite a bit of undeveloped land to be included, um, uh, which does bring the density down to less than one unit per acre for the overall development. Uh, the applicant is pro uh, proposing to put 10 foot um, type B buffers around the perimeter of the site adjacent to residential. Let's see here as well as a 30-foot Type E buffer along Wimberley Road. Type E? Type E, which was what was approved as part of the PUD. And the applicant is uh, indicating that these will be custom-built homes. So as part of the PUD, they provided a very wide range of architectural styles and examples. Um, for uh, We did not include those in the presentation because they would be um, independently uh, built as opposed to a track built. But the applicant does agree to all the required architectural conditions that are approved in the PUD. It was an E buffer in the PUD, is what you're saying. That's correct. Hmm. Um, this item was reviewed by the uh, Parks, Recreation, and Cultural Resources Commission mm -hmm. on September 28th, and they recommended a fee in lieu of. Uh, the proposed development is also consistent with the Apex Transportation Plan, and the Planning Board held um, or reviewed this item at yesterday's meeting and unanimously recommended approval. Staff can recommend approval contingent upon the applicant uh, provide examples on how the uh, buffers will be met, either through arborist reports or photos, or to show the supplemental plantings to bring them up to uh, required status before the construction drawings are signed. With that, um, I am available for any questions, and I believe the applicant is present. If you have okay. any questions for him. All right. Questions for Mike on the uh, master subdivision plan? One dwelling unit per acre. Did you see that? Yeah. Well, my line is right there. This is the Gene Schultz yeah. corporate executive. <laughs> <laughs> right, baby. <laughs> I, I'm just surprised. I thought we got a buffers along the major roads. Uh, um, to see that, that that's this may have been rezoned before that. No, no. I remember Was it? last year. Do we know when when this PUD was approved? Well, I guess the question is: Is it con? Consistent with what this was rezoned for, because that's yeah, yeah. yeah, that's where we're stuck. Yeah, this was application 16 CZ 23, so it was applied for in 2016. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, I guess we're stuck with e-buffers um, because we have to almost prove these things. Unless the applicant would like to. The, the whole thing is, is the quality of the development is a function of how you buffered along major roads. If the applicant wants to push on the community a bunch of housing back ends without putting buffers, which decreases the value of the development, at this point we don't have any choice because it's a subdivision map and I know we have to pretty well, we have no clout. So there's and type I, E all along Wimberley, right? And those are all backs of houses there? Right? That'll be backs of houses. It's 30 foot though, so I imagine... It's 30 foot, but it's... it's wide open. Yeah, wide, right, but uh, the, the homeowners can probably plant that area too. As a homeowners association, I yeah. believe they could. Yeah. But it's it's just um, you know if we're trying to keep apex rural, I I was sitting up here, so I obviously missed on this one. And well, I mean, I agree with what you're saying, but overall, the small price to pay because I've been dying for something like this for a long time. So are you going to move? <laughs> not planning on it. <laughs> That's not a no. <laughs> True. That's your first customer. Okay, okay, is there? We're done. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion for approval. And I'll second it. All right. We got a motion and a second. Discussion? just want to compliment the builder, developer, whoever that person may be. I guess you, Jeff. Um, nice nice job. And if, and if you can carry back to the developer, an A buffer or a B buffer would be better, as you well know. As you well know. I, all right. Okay. Ditto, glad to see this type of development come through. All right, let me call for the vote then. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. All right, that passes unanimously. New business number two, uh, approve possible motion to approve the revisions to Smith Farm 2-4 subdivision plan. Oh, I'll let Mike Clark explain it to us. Go ahead, Mike Clark. Okay. Um, this is a revision to a plan that was uh, approved on December 20th, 2016. Once again, touring to, to the site. Um, this is the central area of the Smith Farm development. You have Olive Chapel Road here, the American Tobacco Trail running up through here, US 64, uh, the airport deck. This is the commercial section of the Smith Farm development. And then this is phase one, which is already under construction, obviously and then the Sweetwater development here, and Richards Road would continue through. This is um, zoned plan unit development. Uh, it was part of application 15CZ32. Um, this does have a split mi uh, mixed land use, uh, 2030 land use designation. The northern portion of the site is high density uh, residential, office services, and um, uh, office employment and commercial services. The lower portion is medium to high density residential, office employment and commercial services. And then the very bottom part is low density residential. Um, currently the site is undeveloped. It does have a path going through it and I believe it does have a still single family residential structure here. It also has several streams that run through the parcel and that's where the revision is required. Um, during review uh, for construction and um, after the site plan was approved, it was determined that the wrong buffers uh, were determined and it's a 100 foot wide buffer versus the 50 that was approved as the previous plan. So the applicant is providing uh, revisions um, to this. Uh, effectively, it does widen the buffers up to 100 feet where required. Um, it does result in a reconfiguration of the lots this side of the townhouse product from Richardson Road down is unchanged from previous, uh, the previous approval. Um, they did bring in different style of the uh, housing stock that was previously approved. Um, it did result in an increase. Originally 301 dwelling units was approved as part of this phase. This would increase it to uh, 304 single family dwelling units. The townhouse product is going to remain unchanged. Um, and it is proposed to have an average lot size of 7,600 square feet. Um, the applicant is still going to be meeting all the 
other PUD requirements and other factors that were approved as part of the uh, December uh, 2016 master subdivision approval, um, including the architectural, the grading, storm drainage, um, public utilities, as well as uh, uh, the requirements from the Parks and Recreation Commission. The planning board did review this item at yesterday's meeting and unanimous, unanimously recommended approval. Um, staff can also recommend approval as submitted. Does anybody have any questions? Exactly. How is the reconfiguration made? I mean, uh, they just make smaller lots or? They actually brought in um, different housing stocks, so some of the lots would be a little bit smaller, uh, shifted other things around. I believe the applicant is not present. Um, otherwise, he would be able to further explain how those details are. Okay. Thank you. Let's see. We increased the buffers. I knew you were going to go there. Go ahead. Finish. We increased the buffers and we added more houses. It's a magic trick. It must be. That's a, yeah. You thought that too, yeah. right? Some yeah. of the lots did result in smaller lots. Though. Really? They actually made them smaller to get this whole thing to work? They they increased the smaller housing product, from what I've been told. Smaller houses. Smaller lots. Smaller lots. Smaller houses. More stream buffer. Did experience, was experience one involved with this part of it? No, it was not. This the, is an R product. The, this, this is actually benefiting the developer. <laughs> So yeah, they, oh shucks, they made that change. Yeah, we have to we have to, have to sell more houses. Buffers and we're gonna have more houses. Gee, if we made it 100 percent buffers, we could really have a lot of houses. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Some of those smell right here. I'm glad we caught the stream buffer thing, but um increasing the number of units there's already what I think we calculated it recently well just to be that, just to be clear it was 301 to 304 so increase 1%. of 1% just a little less than 1% <clears throat> um. <coughs> but you got a tw double yeah. wide you got a extra wide buffer here and there mm -hmm. so it's gonna go cray fishing smaller house there's some affordable housing there, in case you want to go that route with it. Well, realistically, legally, we have to prove this thing. Do we? Thanks. Well, know. if the wrong stream buffer was yeah. being approved well, we before, and now this is a correction. Well, so we're not the just the I, I think the correction. I think the correction is incorrect. <laughs> the, oh, I'd like to ask our town attorney. The method of correction. Yeah, exactly. This is once again uh, like uh, proving a uh, subdivision plan. Correct. Once, once the zoning's been it's done, an put in place, approval. So it's we get out the, the same road. review that you did the first time. If it meets the standards of the UDO and of its rezoning, then they are entitled to an approval. Is the, is, rubber stamp. is the dwelling unit count still within the rezoning? Yeah. Yeah. He he just said he just nodded. Oh, okay. For the record, yeah. okay. for the record, Mike Clark nodded his head. Okay. Yeah, and for the record, the uh, the PUD included phase one, phase two, three, four, as well as the mixed use portion, and the numbers are still within the um, maximums permitted within the PUD. Okay. How did they miss the first time on adding anything? <laughs> wow. Well. I don't think they have any choice then. No, fall on your sword. Make a motion we approve. All right, we got a motion to approve. I'll second it because of the buffers. All right, there you go. Discussion on the motion to approve? You can vote no. I'll call, I'll call for the vote. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed say no. No. Oh, there we go. We finally had some excitement tonight. Controversy, scandal. Yeah. Would you like to comment on your no vote? It's just an opportunity. It's not a requirement. No, thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, thank you very much. That concludes new business. There's no closed session items. There are no work sessions. Having concluded all of our business, I'll turn to the town manager to see if there's any last words he has. No, sir. Those were his last words. We will now adjourn. Thank you very much.